This is um what was this? Um Brian Oaks and Loveless Heavyweight continuing our trend yeah. of brand new music, apparently. That's what we're doing today. This is brand new music. I never heard of this, everybody heard of it, but apparently this song comes out officially their album comes out next week. So they're they got them on here. I actually like when they do that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, they're ahead of the game on music for yeah. a change. I like that. <laughs> so so as I said at the top of the show, Kelly Wells is supposed to be here. He lost his voice. So for, I, I didn't even ask him to do this. But also, I look at my phone and I get an email from Kelly Wells with his predictions for No Mercy. <laughs> Wonderful. I didn't expect this. So we'll go through his predictions as we go through the card. Um, so, Stan, you watched um, NXT a couple weeks ago because you were bored. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you do. What were your thoughts coming back into this random world and you're texting me wondering what the fuck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing that confused me the most was that weird thing up there, and metaphor was sitting up there, and they kind of looked like oh, they were like the goth kids from South Park. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You mean their their lounge area there? <laughs> so, so by the way, that used to be the toxic attraction lounge. Yeah. Who? Toxic attraction. My Mandy Moore's faction. I'm well, telling you, I'm not explaining it. Some people that don't remember. Yeah, you're, you're being a white. You're being a wise ass. Like I'm not <laughs> actually telling people that I don't remember. Oh, you mean the you mean the uh, the uh, the chick that does uh, OnlyFans? Got yeah. It. And Got also, it. um, Gigi Dolan and um, Jason Jane, who are actually on the roster still. Uh, <laughs> are they though? Yes, because Jay Z, G- G- um, Jay G- G- in a rivalry with Blair, Blair Davenport. Actually, oh, okay. so that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, the uh, metaphor. We'll get the metaphor in a minute. This last week they were dressed like they're in the Matrix. That was last week. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't remember what this week. Yeah, this week was funny, but I didn't get the gimmick. I didn't get it because I don't. I don't remember movie reference. I didn't get the movie reference this week. But like, I enjoy them. I, I didn't expect to enjoy them as much as I do. <laughs> but I do enjoy them, <laughs> and I can't <laughs> explain why. Like, I don't. It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> so, but because they're goofy. Yeah, it's probably what it is. Noam Dor is riding a random elephant for no reason. Like, yeah, stupid shit he does. Like, I don't understand it. Like, it the fact that they did the tribute to Weekend at Birdies for three weeks because he was a kind of hot date and they carried around like he was in a fucking Weekend at Birdies. Like, <laughs> shit like that that they do. It's so random in the background. Like, I give them credit. Like, they're standing <laughs> out. Like, I give them credit for standing out. You know, they kind of remind me of a little parade that Adam Rose used to have. Oh, 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 the, the, um, um, the Rosebuds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I missed that. Yeah, it's such a random, such random stuff. Um, so actually, you know what? I know it's not in the order I have it written because we're bringing it up. The NXT Heritage Cup. So they had a big tournament. Um, it was weird. They had like a mini G one that like half the matches were on like level up and things like that. And um, what was funny about it like two weeks ago, they're like, "Okay, here it comes. Here are the last four people in the tournament." Like. Hell happened like I don't know <laughs> watching the show we got I didn't know we got this far I don't know how we got here but um the match now for the Heritage Cup is Noam Dar with Metaphor versus Butch for the Brawling Brutes um who by the way is being more peat done every week even on SmackDown now <laughs> which is cool by me I have no problem with it I, I don't even care if, if Butch is here nickname he's gonna start talking cutting promos now because Sheamus is out I'm all for it you know what I mean so, mm-hmm. Kelly, this is what Kelly had to say. Here's a match I never would have predicted being on the show. Though once the brackets were revealed, it didn't. It did occur to me that Butch is the only baby face who hasn't recently faced Dar. These matches were stat- with established main roster guys against the NXT guys are getting harder and harder to predict. And this one must even be worse because I've written and deleted predictions for both guys. I guess I'm going to go with Dar to win. To finally be bring a little a bit of, stab- of stability to the cup, but I generally don't know how Butch would be booked to lose. Um, in case Butch won the match, perhaps round matches would become a thing on the main roster, which wouldn't hurt my feelings because I adore them. I'm leaning toward Norm Dar retaining, but I do like that idea of bringing in the round concept to the main roster. But I don't know if the main audience would understand it. 
mm-hmm. especially like the audience of SmackDown that is a lot of kids. Like, I don't know if they'd be able to follow along. <laughs> That's my whole thing. Um, Dad, what do you think? Oh, God. Um, I I got to go with Butch um, to, to, to win. And then I think what they're going to do is Butch is going to be doing double duty. He'll be wrestling on SmackDown. And then when he's got to defend the Heritage Cup, he'll be on NXT. Tommy, thoughts? Um, I'm going with the simple rule of which is not in NXT, so he's not going to win. Well, they didn't work for Becky Lynch, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. It's the bottom of my roster because it's the only non title match on here. For some reason, I don't even know why we're having this match because they're both heels. So I have no idea how we're ha- why we're having this match. It is Braun Breaker versus Baron Corbin. I- okay. Why? <laughs> why are we doing this? I don't understand. Well, actually, I think what you can do is you can rent them out as a demolition team if you need work done on your house. Sorry, I'm laughing. I didn't read Kelly's notes until just now, and I'm laughing. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't read his notes. <laughs> I read it for the first time on the air, so like, it's pretty funny. Um, before I get to Kelly's notes, because it's actually really funny, I guess if Braun's going up, like I've been saying this, for, I feel like I've been saying this since WrestleMania. <laughs> like Braun's going to lose and go up to the main roster. I feel like I've literally been saying that since Mania. For that reason alone, I'm going to say Braun wins because I've been wrong about him losing for the last six months. <laughs> I've been wrong. Um, Dad, what do you think? You know, it, if the timing is right and he's going to make that jump to the main roster, you would think you would have him go out with a win. And then basically, <laughs> as far as Baron Corbin goes, I don't know if you keep him in NXT or if you have him follow Braun when he goes to the main roster. What's funny about the Corbin character, he's more relevant down here than he has in the main roster in years. Like, he's literally more relevant. <laughs> I mean, well, there's more of a storyline now with him. I and, like it. I think it's cool. Like, and, and, and the theme music kind of fits him. And, you know, maybe repackaging him is going to send him back to the main roster Hopefully, with a different viewpoint on things, and people will kind of look at it and going, "Well, it's he's not the same guy." No, he's not. He's repackaged, and and to me, repackaging is better. So here's what we're gonna do because my voice is already going to be shot. I'm gonna send Sal Kelly's picks. I know Sal didn't have a whole lot of thoughts on these matches, so I'm gonna have him read Kelly's picks. Okay, as we go through. So, um, Sal as Kelly. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't care about this match if you injected me with an electric, <laughs> electrified carrying machine. Uh, <laughs> the one thing I do care about is Bron Breaker's alignment. He is a pretty good heel and an absolutely atrocious baby face. I agree with him on that. Um, so here's hoping the company isn't trying to force baby face Breaker down our throats. And that is a true... Heel heel match. Breaker wins, obviously. Okay. There you go. So you want to make a pick or no? Um I'll go opposite. I'll say Baron Corbin because yeah. I, I you know it's funny, Baron Corbin can lose every match in the world, it doesn't matter. As <laughs> Corbin, he loses all the damn time and nobody cares because he's such an asshole and he's a great heel. So, Especially in NXT. Like so, do you see Braun going to Raw or SmackDown? Probably Raw, because they have more time to kill. <laughs> Be honest with you. Okay. Uh, moving on. The match was added literally um, over a table, over a dinner table on NXT this week. <laughs> and I'm not even exaggerating whatsoever. <laughs> this the, um, the, um, Tony D'Angelo and Stack invited the, all of these men to dinner. At an Italian restaurant, not joking, and then instead we're having a fatal four way. This is what happened. Not NXT this week. I thought the match was set up. Um, <laughs> it is um the family Tony D'Angelo and Stax versus OTM, which by the way stands for Out the Mud. I am not joking. That is the name of the team. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, oh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> My screen just got a little screw here. Um, Lin- um, Lucent Price and um Bricker Mina with scripts in their corner for some reason. Um. 
Three brothers versus Los Lotharios, who um, Roberto Carrillo and Angel Garza, who are now in NXT apparently. And uh, yeah, now, RC now apparently had. By the way, you missed this cell. The two of them had bad dreams about their about their family were growing up, and they woke up with scars on their chest that are now tattoos of like claws. I swear to God, this happened. It was a bizarre. Thing that happened. They say it's a sign from the grandfather who they were dreaming about. But I thought they are now called Los Primos, not Los Primos. I, I this Wikipedia said. I'm on Wikipedia said. Uh, okay. So uh, why are they even still here? They should have been released too. Because they're good and they're legend. They have a legacy of the of their life, and they give them a second chance down here. I give them an extra chance down in NXT is fine. I I don't know why they're in a title match. Could tell you that. <laughs> I also don't see the I don't see the Angel and Stack losing their belts. And, and, and wait, and wait, I have a question. Yes, I thought the Creed brothers broke up. So the Creed brothers, right. the Creed brothers lost a loser lose in a team, right? And then stalked the schism by joining up the by um by infiltrating their infiltrating their whole thing wearing their masks, and then pissed off Joe Gates to the point where he said, "Fine." Wrestle on um, wrestle on um, the dyad one more time, and you can have your have your jobs back. So they did, <laughs> and now the dyad. I'm surprised they weren't released. By the way, because I know they requested their release, but their contract doesn't expire in a couple of weeks, so that's probably why they haven't fired them yet. You know, the the release got granted. It's just no, it was it was never. It would have been announced during all this if it was really, like, if it was granted. We would have heard about it. I think our contract expired a couple of weeks, so that's why. So, um. Dad, who's who's winning this thing? Yeah. You know, I was gonna originally go with uh the Angel and, and Stax, but I'm gonna go with the Creed Brothers. I think you put the belt back on the, the Creed Brothers and then you let out of mud wrestle them for a title match down the road. All right, um so what did Kelly have to say? Uh death taxes and four way tags on NXT shows. Ugh. I'm going to hate recapping this as always. I strongly dislike title changes in these types of in these kinds of matches. So I will simply go with what I'd like to see happen. The family retains, but in a way that makes Los Lotharios their next two one two threat while the Creeds and OTM pair off in their own feud uh as meat slaps meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. Sal, anyone you're picking here? Um, I mean, you know, I have a hard on for the Creed brothers, but I think I love the family a little bit more right now. So I think the family retains. How is it the second time we brought up you being turned on about something on the show today? <laughs> yes. So, all right, let's move on. We were talking about the Heritage, the NXT North American Championship. This originally was supposed to move to Fa'ali, um, but Oops. obviously he was released. So Oops. here we are instead. And then we, uh, so they announced a triple threat match to start NXT. And it was um, Tyler Bay, Axiom, and um, Dragon Lee. Lee and Dragon Lee, and then Trick Williams won his match earlier in the show and said, "I want a championship." And stormed into Shawn Michaels' office and re- and asked if he could be put in this match in the individual their match. So they made it a fatal four way. And then Trick won the fatal four way in the main event of the show, and the crowd was behind him. It was pretty cool to watch. Bob, by the way, Dirty Dom in NXT, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Because he literally is like, well, I wrestle on Raw. I don't have to wrestle on Under Mercy now. I don't my title on Raw. And he's Oops. like, and they're like, no, you're having a match tonight to determine your number one contender. He's like, who made that match? Who is Shawn Michaels? Why is he making these matches? <laughs> <laughs> I cracked up laughing. I'm like, oh, man. And then he goes and says, uh, Shawn Michaels doesn't run NXT. I run NXT. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, Shawn Michaels, as we go off the air, Shawn Michaels. Sends it to um Vic and um to Vic and um Booker. Booker, by the way, had a terrible night last night, by the way. Um <sighs> people with the wrong names. He, and for some reason he's trying to comparing the Hale to Miley Cyrus. That was weird. But what? Anyway, yeah. It was a weird show. <laughs> anyway, what? He said up, they said him we find out that Shawn Michaels is pizza Dominic Mysterio for saying he runs NXT and made Dragon League the special guest referee for this match. Um <laughs> oh. so okay. and he Dom is sporting that black eye pretty well from the oh, that was a real black eye. That was real. I know. I gave him a black when, eye on Raw. And I would Yeah, when him. he yeah, when he wrestled Dragon Lee. So 
with the with the, with the interesting twist of Tony Dragoline here, I, I was not actually um thinking that Trick's going to win this match until they threw the Dragoline factor out there. Um, I still don't know if he's going to win. I I I. I I, I I personally think Trick and Mello are going to main event the uh, NXT PLE before the um, end of this cycle. So for that reason, I think Jerry Dom's retaining. That? No, I think I'm going to go with Trick winning because I think Dragon Lee is basically going to do the quick one, two, three, and we'll have a title change. And then now Dom's got to explain the mommy why he couldn't hang, hang on to the belt, which is going to set up Dominic getting ousted and JD McDonough coming into the judgment day. You're still on that? No, JD McDonough will join the judgment day. You do realize that you can have five members in the faction, right? <laughs> I also think Damian Priest is going to turn face. I don't think I don't think Dom's going to do that. I think Damian Priest turned face. Personally. So that's my opinion. Um Sal, what are your thoughts on this match? Um Okay, so I thought it was random that Dom won the title in the first place. Obviously, now it fits. Um, I could have very easily said, you know, just have him drop the title at this point, but it's been working. I kind of enjoy it, and I kind of don't want it to end right now. Maybe have him lose it at Mania Weekend or something. But not right now. So I think that Dominic Mysterio is going to retain with a little bit of help. Fair enough. Fair enough. And what did Kelly have to say? Uh, <laughs> Kelly says, I love the Mysterio title reign. He's such a prick. <laughs> he <laughs> was he was likely beating Ali, and I think they saw that they had a great opportunity to put Trick in a big spot and move his story forward. I don't think Trick has a chance uh, I don't think Trick has a chance here unless the North American and main titles are being unified. Yep. Well, that's an interesting thing. Because right. the, the other program I have for Dom is if he loses the title, he goes back, and he's on SmackDown, and now you've raw. got the match between... Technically, technically, Dom's on Raw. Well, here, I mean... I say, you know, Judgment Day is on Raw. Because oh, okay. Rey Mysterio is having the match with um, Santos tonight. Santos, okay. Friday, Friday night, yeah. Santos gets the title. And then th- next thing you know, here comes Dirty Dom challenging Santos for the belt. I don't see that. I think what you do is you keep that belt on Rey and you set up Rey versus Dom for the title for their next match. But we still haven't had another mm-hmm. match since Mania. So I don't see that happening. Either media or uh the rumble or something. Just have some fun with it. Like yeah. Um okay, we move on. We have two more matches. We have um, the NXT women's championship extreme rules match. It is wow. Becky, Lynch, Becky Lynch versus Tiffany Stratton in a rematch. Um Tiffany Shouldn't kept, it be a no mercy match? Well, Tiffany kept beating up Becky with a chair, so Becky said, Fine, I'll give you your rematch, but it's an extreme rules match. So that's how we got here. Fair enough. Very simple. Extreme rules. Well, it's very simple to the point. I give them that credit. You know? Actually, NXT, their matches a lot of times are more extreme than WWE does. So that's for sure. Um, <laughs> when they do the gimmick, they do the gimmick right. And NXT, do their credit. But um, I don't I don't know what to do here because my instinct is whoever lo- like I don't expect them to drop the belt off of Becky right away, but also I don't know why you would have Tiffany lose twice if she's not coming up to the main roster. Like, that's my whole thing with her. And I, I don't understand what they're doing here. So I, I think Becky's retaining, and I think Tiffany is heading to the main roster sooner than later. Dad? Uh, Becky's retaining, but I don't see Tiffany getting called up for a while yet. I'm thinking maybe after the Rumble she may get called up. Or at the Rumble. At the Rumble. But you know, I I, I don't think they ha- would have a program for her. I don't know who she would get into a program with, and that's the whole thing. Is you've got some of the women's division that are injured. So, I mean, interrupt because you have women spots. 
So, I mean, what are you going to do? Between between maternity leave and injury, you have a lot of open spots currently on the women's roster. Right. Okay. (laughs) Now now think of, you know, do you want to have her go against someone like Shayna Baszler? Oh, I think she'd be great against like Raquel. Mm, Possibly. I'm going more like towards uh, a Piper Niven program when Piper, you know, is healed. She is healed. She was not. She wasn't injured. She was sick. She wasn't injured. Okay, but that'd be that'd be great. That or have a wrestle, have a wrestle Valhalla. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> who, what do you? What's your pick for this? Who me? Yeah, you saw. Yeah. Um, I feel like Becky just won it, and I don't think she would drop it so quickly. So, I think Becky's going to retain. And how about Kelly? Uh, Kelly says, uh, here is the main event for me, and in parentheses, and perhaps the actual main event. I typically do not like extreme rules stipulations, uh, but I am sure these two will be great together again. I feel like Becky's story and ability to elevate others is not over yet, so I will very cautiously take her to retain in this spot. Fair enough. Then we have, well, either the main event, because I think they're going to main event with the NFC Championship match, honestly, as they always seem to do. We'll see what happens. It, I mean, it wouldn't shock me because it's Becky, that's the main event. It wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. But Carmelo Hayes versus Ilya Dragunov for the NXT Championship, the rematch that nobody asked for, but we're having it anyway. Um, I, I said it before, I think Melo and Trick are going to have a match on the road. So that's why I think Melo is retaining. I'm just going to keep it short and sweet here. Dad, uh, I see title change. I, I see Ilya getting the belt, and I see Carmelo getting bumped up to the main roster. And I would probably see that possibly that maybe he lines himself with Bobby Lashley. I, I like that idea, but at the same time, I can see them bringing Ilya Dragunov up and have him go after Gunther. I mean, and reform their feud. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that that works. If they had a legendary rivalry, we might not bring it back one more time. Yeah, with an epic, epic like title reign that it, it comes with the middle of right now. So, um, sorry, your thoughts on this match? Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, just keep the title on Carmelo Hayes and see what happens down the road. And um, I want you to say this like uh, Alex Hendez. So um, so how to Kelly? Uh, oh, I just lost it. Where, oh, here it is. Uh, the build for this uh, has been pretty lackluster as Hayes clearly has something brewing with Trick Williams that is much more critical and long term. For that reason, I will take Hayes to retain so that they can save the Trick match for the championship. Though it would work just as well to have Hayes lose because Trick might feel uh slightened that Hayes did not help him out in the North American championship match. Oh interesting. Interesting. Well hello. That's an interesting thought. Yeah, I, I, like I said I have a feeling we're setting up um Hayes versus Trick for the title eventually, honestly. That would be a, a great match. And if that'd be a time for Carmelo to drop the belt, it would be to trick and then for Carmelo to move up. So, all right. Well, that is NXT No Mercy. 